Hello there fellow NPCs, I am Carbon Scythe and today we're going to continue to play Seeds of Chaos. So we have finally ad uh, agreed to help Ysera and Andras to overthrow the world of man. No sense. But first, before we do that, there's going to be a little uh, test run, it seems. And uh, before even that happens... We took a little visit to Alexia. Uh, nothing happened because uh, someone was n r rapping at the door. And, then, and so I had to escape somewhere. No, wait. We didn't escape. We actually stayed in the room. Mattel and Alexia told us to ignore the knocking. So there's a chance we're not even in this room now that Ysera is here to say good morning. So, what happens then? We can only find out if we play the game, so... Let's go! Good morning, hero! How was it... How was it sleeping in a bed again? Better than a dungeon cell? Okay, so we were in here. Yes, very nice. Oh, Rowan, must you be so stiff? There's no need for formality between us, now that all that ugly business is settled. The blue-skinned woman stepped to one side as a maid entered and placed a tray of food on the desk. She bow bowed to the demoness and then left. After ogling the maid's retreating hindquarters, Ysera cast Rowan a sly side-eye. Oh, she's, uh, like, she likes the ladies too, huh? I do hope you are well rested for the work today. No late night excursions? None. Her knowing smirk made him cough and glance away. <coughs> well good, I'm glad that you appreciate my accommodations better than my brother's. Though he still insists that we keep you under guard for the time being. Don't take it too hard, hero. Prove yourself useful in the coming weeks and I'll arrange for it. For an end to all these burdens, some safeguards. The demoness sultry gaze suggested much more than that for his good behavior. Ooh. Now, on to business. I'm sure you're just dying to know what the task we have in store for you first. With bated breath. It's simple, really. You're going to be our eyes and ears in the world. Spying, surveying lands for our conquest and coordinating our armies. Your status as one of the six heroes will give you safe passage to go where you wish, making you the perfect agent. Now onto the use of it, the means uh, by which my brother and I have been able to ferry our troops so far afield. I saw Andras and his men go through the portal. The look of triumph on her smug smile died, her lips twisted in a, into a sour, sour pout. Spoil sport. I suppose I should have guessed that you'd figured it all out, but maybe you don't realize the true extent of our reach. My network of portals stretches across all the six realms, from Arakshan to Uverth. To Uverth. You can use these to quickly travel between each and spread our influence before our enemies have the chance to coordinate against us. You can go anywhere? Well, not just anywhere, the portals must be connected to the magical ley lines. Oh, they got ley lines in this world. Cool, cool, cool. But my reach is vast and will only grow larger as you explore and discover new on top ley lines. Oh, that's cool. It's an exploration game and, uh, well, the fast travel mechanic is that we actually fast travel with teleportation. Cool. My brother, predictably, thinks of this advantage only in armies and maps and marching distances. I believe we should be more broad in our planning. Since you are most familiar with Rosaria, we thought it prudent to begin our conquest there. We need first secure a foothold, and that means the end of the Lord's rule in the duchy surrounding my portal. But first, familiarize yourself with the immediate area, learn what you can about the current situation, and report back to your findings. Is that all? No. One more thing. Andras wishes to test his forces. After the debacle in Earthdale, he has been training them relentless relentlessly. 
There is a village to the north of the portal, a ripe little plum. You are going to help him pluck it. He has already begun mustering his men and will be departing ahead of you. Meet him there at your earliest convenience. And here I thought you said this war was about helping the common folk. You cannot enact the kind of change we intend without war, and you of all people should know how pitiless a war can be. We need resources, weapons, gold, none of which comes without a price. I didn't agree to join you to become a common bandit killing innocent villagers. A bit of advice then, Rowan, from me to you. If you're so concerned about how others will conduct himself, then do as he asks. It will do far better for everyone involved. Tell the guard when you're ready to leave. Enjoy your breakfast. Roma was silent for several moments after Yasera left. Then, as if a dam had broken within him, he slammed his fist against the wall in anger. Damn it! Report anything important directly to us. Write detailed maps or everything else. Roma did not respond, staring stone-faced at the shimmering portal beyond which a green vista of rolling uh, hills stretched to the horizon. Rosaria, his homeland. Good luck, my hero! Ooh, yes, 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 yes! Ooh, we won, ooh. Hmm. We have 10 steps, 200... What, what's the difference between the goals? Hmm. Uh, journal... Ah, quick... Uh, boom. Nothing yet. Yet. Uh, and that's annoying. We can go into the journal with a quick key, but we can't get out of it. Same goes for objective, I would assume. Capture the village to the north of the portal. By week three, I see. And now we get to choose where we want to go. Huh. I would say let's go here first. Oh, okay, so it's not so that something doesn't happen on all of them. Hmm, I see. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. So this is the village we need to uh, hunt down. Let's see, there was a... Cast one move point to traverse, have movement cost to... Have the movement cost to travel on. What, what, what do you mean? Cost three point move points to traverse, okay. Ah, okay, I see, so... Cost point 25 move points to traverse, yes, okay, I see, I was really smart. By not be doing by being stupid. Uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, by going on paved roads, it's uh, we the movement is not as bad. By going through thick forest, it's going to take a lot more time. And now, if I actually look closely, it's not completely black. I can see the surrounding area. There's a river going here, and the, the road keeps on going. There's a lot of farms around here. We need to. Destroy it all. Uh, let's see. Cost. Ah, okay. A normal movement cost 0.5. I guess. Have the movement cost to travel. No, normal movement cost two. But plain uh, planes cost one. Thick forest cost three. Uh, paved ground cost 20, 0.25. Gotcha. But let's check out what we got around. But this is also by week three. We did week one. We don't have to do it yet. Ooh, I see. Now we have seen everything around here. And here up here is another town. And uh, let's see. Have movement, quarter movement. Oh, this is half moon too. Hmm. But does anything happen? And the exploration, okay. Cost three move points to 
cross. Uh, let's see here. I need to get back here. So we have 4.5 left. And this would cost... We have 4. Can't check it, damn it. We got something here as well. No, I can't go here because it's too expensive. One, two... <sighs> I don't think I have... But it's still by week three. So it should be fine. What is this? Hills cost two points to walk across. Here's some... not a village per se. Oh! Okay, something does happen. Okay. Uh, oh, nice, nice, nice. Science of a fire. Strange scratchings in the ground. Two rotting animal corpses that had been drained of blood. 24 journal? What's what's that about? At first, Rowan had thought he'd found a campsite from the, from the night before. But the more he looked, the more certain it was that, what it, that it was something else. This was no ritual of Salencia. This was either something born of occult superstition or the allure of chaos. Unless it got someone more attuned to magic than he was, there was no way to know for certain if anything beyond the awful hokey pokey had occurred here. However, the very fact that people had been resorting to such things in this homeland disturbed the hero. Okay, let's double check here. What, is, what does this journal have to say? Oh! Primary statistics. We're, ooh, this is like an actual RPG. That's cool. Great ideas, magic places. Oh, wow! Wow, I love this! He'd been keeping his eye out for more signs of the occult and chaos worship uh, as his uh, scouting continues. Okay, so that's it. And we're running out of steps. So, let's see... Winery! Ooh, fancy that! During his exploration to the plains of Rosaria, Rowan stumbled on a small private winery and, and nearby vineyard. The wine produced in a place like this is, lo is the local specialty when it comes to alcohol. You won't find a better wine in, in the Six Realms. These yards are usually have stored of their produce from, year, from each year ready to be sold to collectors or those seeking refreshment for special occasions. While the yard itself would be useless to blood mean, the stockpile could be distrib distributed to the soldiers and seriously boost the current morale. Oh, we are looking into everything, uh, so we know where to travel when we are actually leading the army. That's cool. I like that. Of course, you can only collect the stockpile once, and there will be no saving it uh, with uh, what constitutes the twins' armies. Leave it for later. We're not doing that right now. And we only have one point left. Pop! End of week one. Oh, it continues. I see. Rowan had left with a kiss and a promise to return. As worried as she was, Alexia had to trust him. He had, after all, come all this way to save her. Compared to the months she had had to wait for him, a week was practically nothing. So when she heard a knock at the door, she felt a momentary rush of elation that she had returned to her that she that he had returned to her early. Her blood, blood ran cold, however, when she recognized the sound of the knock and who it was who was knocking. Setting her jaw, she strode over to the door. Well, well, if it isn't... Go fuck yourself, you lying bastard! She slammed the door in his face. And a week... And a week report. Gotcha, gotcha, cool. Like this. This is really nice. Personal gold, treasury, got it. Morale. Forge impact, fortune not constructed, brothel not constructed. 
Current research. Currently researching nothing. Mm. Love it. No wounds, no damage. Zero experience, which means we can battle stuff. Week two. Oh, yes. Love it. Hey, okay, we're just back there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hmm. Don't go too f Oh, what's this? Some kind of deserted place. Uh, where... It's gonna be expensive to go through it. But the hills might give us something useful. Nope, nothing useful in the hills. Hmm. Cost three, damn it. Cost three. Hmm. And nothing here either. What is this then? Mine! Ooh! Increases iron income. Cool. Did we get anything here? No. Did we get in? Nope, nothing there. And it costs two to move here. Got it. Event name, tutorial name. Uh, okay, so not everything is named. I found what looks like an abandoned mine. There's no signs of anyone working here recently, but it seems to have been an iron mine. A useful fund. We call. We can sell the iron to help raise funds, or build a forge and build our own stockpile of weapons and armor. Where exactly is it? Close by the portal, just a little to the southwest. South. South. It should be northwest. I am scared now. I need to check if there's a, a compass rose somewhere on the map later. Excellent. I'll make arrangement to bring in some workers. That is, unless you have orcs available to do the work instead, brother. Ha! Huh. Those warriors would hate to be sent off to do menial labor after the tales I fed them. Later. I won't mind sending them off like that, but... But I don't have the numbers to spare right now. Humans it is then. I've already got some people in the area we can use, but next time I'll have to use funds from our treasury to start mining operations using locals. Wait for me there, Rowan, and keep an eye on things. Noise. Uh, let's see, compass rose. No, but we can zoom. Oh, uh, what? See. Huh? Well, this that's a that's a weird uh, thing. No, no, no clue. Okay, so that oh, these are not actual buttons. I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Now, let's get back. Mm. Oof. Let's ignore the... Oh, there's a lot of forest here. It's gonna... Take some time to get there. Um, but honestly, this is where we need to go. So... Three, that's exactly what we have. Three... Oh, this is empty. This seems to be empty too. So that would be two, perhaps. So five, seven, nine, ten. Hopefully it works. End of week two. Turn to end. Shortly after returning to the castle following Rowan's second week in service to the twins. Well, well. How have you been doing, Rowan? Have you been enjoying the countryside? I am. Um... So much so that you've been ignoring orders? What? What are you talking about? I have one week left! The red demon swings his hand out and slaps Rowan across the face, stunning the man and almost knocking him to the floor. You were ordered to scout out the village north of the portal and help me capture it. You cannot carry out such simple tasks, and you are of no use to me and my sister. Failing again will be dealt with harshly. Is that clear? 
You have one more week to occupy that village. Yeah, exactly! Finished, Andreas turned and walked away down the corridors to the, of the castle. Rome was left there for a moment before being ushered back to his room to rest. End of week report. Ooh, I got some money. Two weeks remaining to complete current May. No, it's just one week left. And no wounds. Forge not constructed. Forge is being worked on though. Spy impact. Brother, brother, and brothel not in constructed. Current research. Currently researching nothing. Ah, we do have some experience though. Week three. Yes. Now. Cost three. Cost two. That's that's far better. Unless, yeah, it's, it should be good. Cost one. Plus one. Uh, I, one. Uh, two. Don't remember what these cost. Four, I guess. Because I'm just thinking I'm going down here. Yeah. Six ones left. Hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, I get to do something more afterwards. You know. First village captured. As Rowan near the rendezvous point, he began to a worry. He began to a worrying familiarity with his surroundings. He recognized these woods. These hills. Climbing the last hillock, he came upon Andras and his orcs raiders readying themselves for the coming battle. Beyond them, just over the last rise, Rowan could see the confirmation of his worst fears. Briarbridge. We're attacking Briarbridge? As the closest neighboring village to Arthdale, it was a place that he'd visited many times. He knew the people, he knew the families, and now. About time you got here, we're ready to get started. What do you want me to do? Scout out their defenses, determine how much resistance they can actually muster against an attack. This isn't a slash and burn job, today is a mission of conquest. We want to take as many of them alive as possible. Not to worry, Rowan, there will be plenty more chances in the future for looting. The demon savored the last words, relishing the intonation of each syllable. Rowan felt sick. Now, go make yourself useful. Um. It was with surreal sense of nostalgia that Rowan walked the streets of Briarbridge. Visiting this place had been the height of adventure as a child, a distant journey to a new and unfamiliar place. As he wandered through the village, Noting the pathetic state of their defenses, Rowan's unease grew. Whatever state of alert the local militia might have been in the Arsdale's burning, it had eventually passed. He kept his hood up, though that didn't stop the odd, inquisitive townsfolk from peering curiously at the cloaked figure wandering about. Luckily, no one he knew recognized him. Many times he contemplated fleeing, but in the end he did make his report to Andras. You could hear the demon all but cackle in his head as he spoke to him through the necklace. Andra selected to attack at dusk. As our armies expand, we will need to decide which of our forces will risk on these expedi expeditions. Losses are simply a fact of conquest. The orcs are ready. Wait there for my arrival. Rowan, his task completed, made his way to the edge of town, trying desperately not to dwell on what was about to happen. Rowan? And then, fate decided to play a cruel trick. Old man! Ro Rowan! Goddess friend, it is you! Yes, I... I oh no. With nary a word, that old man rushed over to embra and embraced him nearly dropping his walking stick in the process. Oh dear boy, it is good to see you. I'd, get, I'd all but given up hope. 
His warmth, warm grin left Rowan speechless. It took him a moment to regain his composure. Elder, you... It's good to see you again. The old man chuckled, stepping back from his hug and looking his former ward up and down. I hardly recognize you under that heavy cloak. Come, sit down and have a drink with me. I'll introduce you to my grandniece. I... Please tell me, where is your wife? What happened with the demons? Rowan couldn't, uh, couldn't look him in the eye. He bit his lip and, uh, and looked away. The elder's smile slowly died on his face. His expression turned to concern. Don't tell me Alexia is not with you. A low breeze sent Rowan's cloak fluttering, revealing for a brief moment his leather arm and the sheathed sword beneath. The elder's eyes widened. You're armed. Rowan, what's going on? If we do... Um, <sighs> we can't warn them because of this stupid necklace. Make up a lie. Of course, I've been on the road hunting demons after all. The elder chuckled, rubbing at the whips of his beard thoughtfully. That doesn't explain why you're wearing that heavy cloak in broad daylight. If I were a superstitious man, I'd think you'd had it. I'd think you didn't want people to know you were here. Rowan seized upon the pretext. He glanced around conspiratorically, leaning in so that the elder could hear him whisper. There's someone here that I'm trying to track down. Who in Charlotte could you be looking for in Briarbridge? An agent of the demons. I don't have uh, time to talk. You never saw me. I, I... Without so waiting for an answer, Rowan turned and st stalked away from the Elder. He had to resist the urge to run. Wait! The loud ringing of the village bell made Rowan's blood run cold. He rushed from the town, making distance so, at the, so as not to be mistaken as a villager by Andra's orcs. Ooh, that's harsh. Rowan fled the town heading to a nearby hillside to witness what came next. Against his own instincts, he forced himself to look. Again. The fight, if it could be charitably called that, was brief, but bloody. Andra's orcs attacked the village from all directions, sweeping aside the disorganized militiamen as if they weren't even there. Once the orcs reached the town square, the fighting became far more vicious. To Rowan's surprise, a small band of militiamen and villagers managed to halt the first charge, driving the orcs back and leaving several dead on the ground. Brave, heroically so, but it was a futile effort. Once the orcs regrouped, Hanras personally led the second charge that broke the back of their resistance. Several bloody minutes later, and all that was left were the dead or dying. Wading through the gory aftermath, Rowan felt sick to his stomach. Bodies slithered to the ground in varying states of dismemberment. Crushed heads and pulpy masses of blood and viscera coated the ground like a lighter sheen of snow. Rowan's chest constricted. These men had died on his account. He felt their dull, dead glares burning a hole in his back as he hurried to answer his master's summon. Ah, servant, glad you could join us. You did good work. These fools never knew what hit them. Seems these peasants can actually put up a fight when they put their minds to it. Rowan's blood ran cold as he recognized the five prisoners kneeling on the ground in front of Andras. They were survivors from Othdale. Faces he had known his whole life. Jeroen the Bo Bowyer was there. It, it, it was called a Fletcher in the, his hometown. Clutching a gut wound so deep Rowan had to look away to avoid getting nauseous. Really? This hardened, cre uh, hardened warrior? And next to him... Andras made a sharp gesture toward his men, and two orcs dragged the blooded and bedraggled figure to the floor. They set him on his knees before Andras. Seems this old man was the leader, can you believe it? You killed my men. And I'd do it again, you monster! 
Andros struck him with the back of his hand, the weight of the impact sending the Elder crumbling to the earth with a sickening crunch. You will address me as master. I don't care whose boot you used to lick before I came here. This is my village now. The Elder struggled to pick himself up off the ground, blood dripping from his shin from where he'd been struck. He lifted his head, panting heavily as he stared directly into Andra's eyes. You're a master of nothing, a coward who preys on those weaker than himself. Karos, take you, demon. I'd rather bow to a pig rolling in filth than address you as master. I'm half tempted to stick you like a pig, you mouthy old fart. The elder lifted his head as if to spit at him, but was struck by a sudden coughing fit. Andras shook his head in disgust. Puff. A village full of able young men, and you're the best they can come up with. Tell that to your dead orcs. There was something terrifying in the look Andros gave the elder. He made a curt gesture, and the orcs surrounding the captives drew their swords. Kill them. Kill a lot of them. Craven, I said the words. I said the words, not them. Their only crime was defending their homes. Cut my head off and be done with it. Example must be made, and a spike would be good to would be too good for your wrinkly neck. Uh, Andras, these people are more useful to you alive. Rowan. To Rowan's horror, the elder lifted his bloodied head to stare at him. The look of utter incred incredulity on his face was almost too much to bear. A cold, lizard-like smile spread across Andra's face. You know this man? He's, he's a survivor from Arthdale. You don't say. Draw your sword, servant. Oh, fuck you! That's unnecessary! What? Perhaps I agree that some of these peasants can still be of use, but an example must be made first. The red demon turned to Rowan and spoke quietly enough that only the three of them could hear. The life of this fossil is forfeit. Kill it. If you make me do it myself, I'll make an example of the rest of them as well. Mm. Why are you doing this? You need these people! I need to know I can trust you to follow orders. Unlike my sister, I'm not yet convinced. Prove your loyalty with actions, not words. I Shut up! Raise your sword and stand aside and watch. Oh, fuck you! So you see this face? That's all! Oh, you evil motherfucker. Oh! <sighs> there is no good choice here. Without saying a word, Roman stepped forward and drew his blade from his scabbard. The world seemed to narrow down to a pinprick. He looked down at the man who raised him, that had helped him through so much. The hero squeezed his eyes shut for a moment as tears began to stream down his face. The elder simply looked at him, his face a mask of sorrow. My boy. Rowan raised his blade high above his head, feeling the weight of his arms like an unbearable boulder about to crush him. What have you done? Ha <laughs> ha! That was beautiful. Good work, servant. Roman resisted the urge to throw his sword at Andras' arm his smarmy grin. His knuckles clenched white right around his hilt of his blade. I've... I've done as you asked. Now let these people go. He's not gonna do it, is he? Andras' eyebrow rose. He looked at Rowan as if he had just said that the sky had turned green. Let them go! I said I wouldn't kill them. The orcs guard yanked Rowan's former friend to their feet, manacling their hands and forming them into a marching line. An excellent first conquest, if I'd say so myself. Our first victory on the road to a great empire. I'm heading back to Bloodmead. Hunt down the stragglers and bring back whoever else you can. We can celebrate when you return. Oh, that's evil. 
Oh, and I still have uh, feet to uh, uh, still capable of walking a bit more. I wait for the instructions from the twins. Gotcha. So where do we go from here? Uh, we did find the mines. We find the winery. Uh, oh, here is a fortress. Let's go there. Let's see what we got going here. I mean, I should not be doing this. I I am just here doing demons bidding uh, because it's fun to explore. That's just bad. And it continues outside of the screen. That's no wrong way. Fuck off. And it, oh, it's a okay. So this is as far down as it goes. No, it's not. This is as far down as it goes. How far up can we go then? Uh, this is as far up. And... Oh, uh, there's a village here. Something there. Now, how far... Oh, we almost reached the end there as well. Huh. Well, anyway, let's continue to this fortress we have going on here. Uh, what do we have here? Fortress costs one move to traverse. Reeve, keep the visit before goal two. I'm a Reeve keep. Just past the river crossing. You want me to scout the place out or move past for now? Turn around and go back over the river. While that keep is there, we can, can't can move soldiers across the river. So ignore that area for now. We will deal with the duke later. Oh, okay. I'm not allowed to go there. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. Almost out of movement. And here's uh, end of week three. Village captured. Rowan emerged from the portal with a look of cold fury on his face. Ysera smirked at his hot approach. Well done, my hero! You've exceeded even my lofty hopes for you. In just a few weeks of effort, look at what you've accomplished. Where is she? They, sp they say patience is a virtue. Seeing the murderous look in Rowan's eyes, Ysera let out a gentle chuckle. Though, for the life of me, I cannot possibly fathom why. You've done great work, Rowan. Of course you may see your darling wife. Bring her in, brother. Alexia walked into the room like she was about to face her execution. Yaw set. Her face schooled into a collected mask. She stopped short when she saw Rowan, her eyes going wide. Alexia ignored the demons, ignoring their knowing stares as she crossed the gap between her and Rowan at her run. Rowan! She threw her arms around him, holding him tight as he reciprocated the gesture. Rowan closed his eyes for a moment and pretended they were elsewhere. She leaned her head into the crook of his shoulder, sheltering herself with his, within his arms. He felt her breath against his chest, the gentle way she trembled in his arms. You see, Rowan, we are as good as our word. Here is your wife, safe and sound. She has wanted for nothing while in our care. Nor will she want for anything now that you are reunited. She is yours, as surely you are ours. From now on, the two of you may move as you will within the castle. You will no longer be prevented from being together, save for your duties to us. As much as Rowan wished he could simply hold her to his chest. He knew he had to play the part of a protective husband. He made a show of pulling her back from her, examining the glorified manacle locked around her neck. That amulet. Alexia stays here at all times to ensure your obedience. Is that really necessary, brother? Has Rowan not given us sufficient assurance yet that he, we need to continue forcing his wife to be our house guest? 
If he isn't up to the task, it'll be good to have her on the hand so that he can be properly punished. And as you're getting ahead of yourself, but we'll discuss this later. A lie, and they all knew it. The last thing the twins would want is for Alexa to be rid of her amulet, for that will free Rowan to do anything. For now, Rowan, I will leave you and your blushing bride to your own affairs. Whatever house arrest the two of you were under is over. Alexei will have free range of the castle, as you are both now under our protection. You no longer have anything to fear in this castle. Please spend some time together, catch up, and let the staff know if you need anything. In the morning, I'll organize any change you'd like to, like to your sleeping arrangements. Andras barked out a mocking laugh, shooting a smirk in Alexia's direction. Yes, enjoy one another. Have a good evening, you two. They walked together, hand in hand, as if in a dream. Roman felt the soothing warmth of her palm clasped in his and felt his heartbeat thud heavily in his chest. But that is where I cut off for today's episode. Uh, this is very different from any of the visual novels I've been playing so far. I enjoy it. It seems to be an actual real RPG system involved into this. And there's exploration and there's going to be castle management and a lot of lore. Uh, something I will be exploring on my free time, I believe. Uh, but yeah, this uh, I am very much looking f uh, be I'm very excited to continue this game. Uh, so that was the intro, now we're getting into the real shit. Yeah. And if you want to watch anything else that I've been playing, you can find it at the bottom of the screen. And remember, just because you're not the main character doesn't mean you're not important. Goodbye everyone.